Okay, this is for Astronomy 320, and this is the online Astronomy 320 lecture number three. This material is what's going to be my inspiration for the questions that I write for quiz number three. Also, don't forget, we have our exam number one Thursday of next week. So the quiz is on Tuesday of next week, and the exam is on Thursday of next week, and I'll try to do another one of these for the, a review for the exam that may not come out until Wednesday, the day before the exam itself. All right, so, and then, um, so this will cover basically the, the rest of chapter three, and then just the very beginning of chapter five. Okay, just the very beginning of chapter five. Okay, so the first question we have is, what is mass? So that was answered back here. You got a whole bunch of stuff, but it's basically the amount of stuff packed into a volume. Okay, this one right here. It's a property of the body. We, we went over all this. We talked about inertia and all that good stuff. But it's the amount of stuff packed into a volume. Okay, what is volume? Volume is the amount of space that an object or a substance takes up. Okay, three-dimensional space. Volume is three dimensions. It's measured in cubic centimeters or meters squared or feet squared. I mean, sorry, cubed. It's measured in cubic centimeters or meters cubed or feet cubed. It's a, it's a, it's a volume. It's cubic, it's not an area, okay? Area would be two dimensions, it's a volume, okay? You can't measure it in acres or anything like that, it's a volume. Okay, what is density? Density is equal to mass divided by volume, it's a ratio. It's how much mass you have per unit volume. So things like uh, iron, lead, gold would have enormous densities, whereas styrofoam would have a very small density. Water is about one gram per centimeter cubed or a thousand kilograms per meter cubed, okay? What is inertia? Inertia really is a measurement of a body's ability to oppose your attempt to change what it's already doing. So if you remember back to Newton's first law, an object at rest wants to remain at rest, an object in motion wants to remain in motion with a constant velocity, and will, and will do so unless acted upon by a net external force. So a force is used to change the motion. Things want to keep doing what they're already doing. If they're at rest, they want to stay at rest. If they're in motion with a constant velocity, they want to stay in motion with that constant velocity due to their inertia. So the more inertia something has, the more mass it has, the more force has to be applied to change its motion. Its motion. Okay, so inertia is really a measure, measurement of the object's ability to resist your attempt to change its motion, to change what it's already doing. What is weight? How is weight different than mass? Well, mass is the property of the body. Wherever you go in the universe, your mass stays the same. In order to change your mass, you're going to have to start, you know, exercising and eating really low-calorie di dinners or whatever. If you want to gain mass, then you can, like, sit on the couch all day watching Oprah or whatever, People's Court or, or Oz, some guy named Oz, Days of Our Lives, and then you can eat cheeseburgers and drink milkshakes, then you can gain mass. Weight depends on your mass, but also on the gravitational force of where you are. Out in deep space, your mass is the same, but your weight is zero. Okay, On the Earth, you've got a certain weight because of how much the Earth pulls down on your mass. You go to the Moon, you've got the same mass, but a smaller weight because the force with which the Moon pulls down on you is less than the force, for example, with which Earth pulls down on you. Okay, explain conservation of angular momentum. Okay, it's important to us in this way. Angular momentum is it's a conserved quantity. It's You've got involved here radius, uh, spin velocity, how fast something spins, um, and mass, okay? Now, assuming the mass stays the same, like the figure skater. When the figure skater draws in her arms, her mass did not change, but she decreased her radius. Well, if you have radius, mass, and spin velocity, how fast you're spinning, then if your mass stays the same and your radius goes down, then if you could have a conserved quantity, your velocity has to go up, your spin has to go up. You have to spin faster. Where is it important to us? We start talking about these huge clouds that are going to get start spinning faster and faster and shrinking, okay? As they shrink, they spin faster and then they form a solar system. That's why the planets were given an initial velocity when they were orbiting the sun. 
because the whole cloud that they formed out after was this big huge cloud of spinning debris that formed the sun and the planets and the moons and everything and they were all given motion as this cloud shrunk it spun faster and faster and faster because of the conservation of angular momentum so that's where it becomes important for us it's a later chapter so when we get there you'll say oh yeah way back there we, we learned about angular momentum okay what did Newton recognize about the force of gravity up until Newton's time this thing called gravity was mostly associated with the earth people did not just like they, they thought that the atmosphere explain, ex, 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 extended out into all of space but they didn't realize gravity did as well so Newton said wait a second maybe gravity is everywhere maybe that's why the earth orbits the sun maybe that's why this the moon orbits the earth so that's down here someplace we can talk about all this this is all weight inertia stuff okay so we had the or was it did i miss it already uh this is the end how is that picture i'm so fast oh here it is okay so, see, we could actually launch, theoretically, a cannonball, oops, what was that, a cannonball into orbit around the Earth if we were up high enough. Obviously, if it's in the atmosphere, the, it's going to have friction, it's going to drag it down. But, if you give it enough initial velocity, it'll actually go into orbit around the, around the um, Earth. And the same thing happens with the Earth orbiting the Sun. The Earth wants to go like this, it wants to shoot off that way. But... Newton said, wait a second, maybe that same thing that made that apple fall on my head is the same thing that's keeping the Earth in orbit around the Sun. Earth wants to shoot off straight. It's, it's got inertia. It wants to go in a straight line at a constant velocity. But instead, because of this force, this net force acting on it, it can't. It gets kept in this circle around the, around the Sun. The Earth, the Earth had its choice. It would shoot off straight. You might say, oh, the Earth wouldn't do that to us because we'd, we'd go out here, we'd freeze to death, and we'd die. Well, Earth would say, heck with you people, polluting my oceans and stuff. I'm taking off. I'm out of here. Okay, well, anyway, Earth can't do that thanks to the sun. So we can survive and be somewhat warm or even really hot on days like today. Okay, um, looking at Newton's equation for the gravitational force between two bodies, what can we say when the, what would happen to the force if we double the distance between them? What would happen if we triple the distance between them? Okay, that's also here. Let me do this so I don't take as much time doing it. Okay, there's the equation. G is just a constant. Don't worry about G. It's a product. You have the two masses. Mass of object one could be the Earth. Ma mass of object two could be the Sun. Distance between them squared. Okay, and there's equal and opposite forces on them. So you get this. So now the distance between them squared. That means for doubling the distance, you go from one to two. Say, you go from one to four. So you cut the force between them to a quarter. So you can see it right here. So let's say we had two. Well, let's say this one here. One newton times one newton divided by one meter squared is like around one one kilogram times one kilogram divided by one meter squared is around like we say it's one newton. We can't put an equal sign here because I don't have the g in here. Now, if we double r, it goes down to a quarter of a newton. If we triple r, it goes down to one ninth of a newton. It follows this one I had up here. Um, see how it falls off rapidly with distance? It's not a straight line. It's a quadratic. Okay. Okay, then um, what past discoveries did Newton's laws give a mathematical framework to? Well, remember, okay, Galileo said two objects would fall and hit the ground at the same time. Now, mathematically, why was that true? Was, do we have laws that say, no, this is the way the universe works, so that's why Galileo was right and the Greeks were wrong? Well, what, with Newton, we did. And with Newton, we could actually show mathematically why Kepler's laws were what they were. So, in other words... Kepler's law, Kepler's three laws of planetary motion, which we've, that we've gone over, those are those are observations. They don't explain why that is. They didn't explain why is it that the planets are not don't orbit in perfect circles, but actually elliptical. Why is it they sweep out equal areas at equal amounts of time? Why is it that uh, the uh, period, how is it, the, the distance between a squared, the distance from the sun squared equals the period cubed, or vice versa? It's, it's like the it's a relationship between the period and the distance from the sun. Why is that? Well, Kepler's laws didn't explain that. Newton's laws, if you dive deep enough into them, you say they explain that stuff big time, left and right. We got three little laws. They don't take much to say, but they explain so much that we did not know before Newton came along. There's two great accomplishments achieved by astronomers using Newton's laws of motion 
and Newton's universal law, law of gravitation. Again, again, in the PowerPoint slides, you have both of them that, that I mentioned. Okay, there's more, but the two ones that I mentioned had to do with Edwin Haley, a friend of Newton's, observing a comet coming through and use Newton's law to say, hey, that comet's going to come back in about 70, I think it's 76 years. Well, Haley died before it could come back, but it came back, just like he predicted, using Newton's laws of universal laws of gravitation and Newton's laws of motion. And then the other guy, Olivier, he uh, noticed discrepancies in the orbit of Uranus. So they weren't following Newton's laws. Okay, so he said, well, either Newton's laws are wrong or there's something else applying a gravitational force out there on Uranus. So he told people about where it should be. People got their telescopes out and independently, Neptune was discovered exactly where it was supposed to be. So Neptune turned out to be discovered because there were discrepancies in the orbit of Uranus based on Newton's laws of motion and his universal gravitational law. And so as a result, that's how they said, let's go look for this other planet out here. That's where it would be if, if Newton's laws are true and Newton's laws were true and there was the other planet. Okay, what is wavelength? Okay, it's the distance between two consecutive identical points on the wave. So now we're into chapter five, okay? Chapter five, and then what is light? We, I go into all this stuff, but it seems what's important for us to get. Okay, there's wavelength. I don't know what's going on here. But anyway, it's the, it's the distance between two consecutive identical points. What is amplitude? Okay, it's the distance from equilibrium to a crest. So there it is right there. This would be equilibrium. That means that's where the medium would be if there was no disturbance moving through it. The best way to think about it is a placid lake, no waves moving through it, nice smooth lake. And that's where the, the, the top of the lake would be. Then you disturb it and the water vibrates back and forth through equilibrium. So the amplitude would be the distance from equilibrium to the maximum height, the, the crest. Okay. What is wave speed? That is just how fast the wave is going. Frequency is how often the, the wave repeats. How many cycles per second? A full cycle would be from here to here or from there to there, wherever the wave starts repeating itself. That would be a full cycle. So the frequency is how many of, of these cycles do we have in a single second? So in other words, if, this, if we saw this many cycles in one second, okay, the frequency would be two cycles per second, two complete cycles per second. That would be two hertz. That would be the frequency if this was one second from here to here. Period is seconds per cycle. Okay, it's how many seconds does it? There's wave speed. Uh, it's how many seconds? What did I did I miss it? Oops. Low frequency. Okay, here's period. So how long it takes for a cycle so to, for a complete cycle? How long? So going back here, if this had a frequency, where is it now? If this was frequency of two hertz, two cycles per second that it would take half a second to complete a cycle, right there. This would be one whole second for two cycles, then the period would be 0 0.5 seconds, it would take half a second to complete a cycle. Okay, what is period? Okay, that's the seconds per cycle, they're inverses of each other. What is the relationship between frequency and period? They're inverses of each other. Okay, what is the relationship between wave speed, frequency, and wavelength? That is the last question. Okay, so we go back over here to PowerPoint. Okay, so I think I got it down here, right? Oh, this is, okay, here we go. Yeah, so, so frequency is cycles per second hertz, period is seconds per cycle, therefore frequency is one over period. Period is one over frequency. Then what's the, what is it between velocity, frequency, and wavelength? Well, velocity is distance over time. We've got the distance that a cycle is, it's the wavelength. We've got the time it takes a cycle to complete a cycle, that's the period. So we've got a distance over time. But from up here, we've got frequency equals 1 over the period. There's wavelength over period. So F equals 1 over the period. So we end up with velocity equals wavelength times frequency. So the product of the wavelength times the frequency is equal to the velocity. Okay, so there we go. We've got, we've, we've got these are what I'm going to use as my inspiration. Now remember, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to not say, I'm, I'm going to say you can use th these sheets here. you got this one here. And I'm going to say also you, you can use the PowerPoint, okay, so you can refer to this. I don't like having to do that, but where does it go? I don't like that, that you get to refer to these. Normally if we were in class you wouldn't get to refer to these, or you wouldn't, get, you wouldn't even get to look at the worksheet. 
but see that I do that and then the honest students will say oh we can't use this oh we can't use this okay but then the not so honest students like I said before they'll use them because I'm not in your house looking over your shoulder watching what you're doing all right so I'm just this is like the honor code so now so the honest students don't have to feel like they're cheating or, or, or feel like they're having their disadvantage because they're not cheating everybody gets to use I'm going to assume you have access to the PowerPoint slides okay and I'm going to assume you have access to this okay so that I'm going to keep that in mind while I'm making up the quiz that you have access to all this so keep that in mind as you're studying for the quiz this is up it should be the final thing okay so again um, I'll probably start to try to make more videos for the rest of chapter five soon but this is what the quiz number three on Tuesday is going to be on and then quiz then then the, the exam that's going to be on Thursday will be on everything I guess we cover up until Wednesday and then I'll do another review for the exam and it'll probably be uploaded to YouTube on Wednesday all right so let me say good night for now and I think that let me hold it pause in case I remember something okay I couldn't remember anything I thought for about 45 40 seconds uh, maybe less than that so good night and the quiz will be up same the same rules as the first two quizzes no difference so good night